Hey there, Adam Mitchell here, and coming to you with the second episode of Kokuro, Reflections from the Dojo. Now, in the first episode of this podcast, I did call it Matt Chat. Originally, that's what I wanted to uh, title the podcast, but as I started to sort of see where the direction of the podcast was going, and as I started to think through it a little bit more, it made better sense that uh, one of the principles that I teach to the students, especially my young students, is the principle of using uh, kokoro, which is a pretty common word. Uh, If you've been around a Japanese martial arts school, you've probably heard that term kicked around quite a bit, but it fundamentally means uh, wisdom or knowledge. Today what I want to do is I want to continue the discussion uh, with you about the the fundamental difference between right and wrong. Now, this is, uh, if if you listened to the first episode, you know we talked about... uh, Bushido, The Soul of Japan, that was written by uh, Nitobe. What I'm doing now is I'm going through each one of the tenets that Nitobe presents uh, as the uh, the tenets of warriorship or the tenets of the Bushido, uh, of the, the warrior class. And the first one is Gi, which means sort of, which means rectitude or justice. My entire career as a martial arts teacher, one of the Uh, most important things that I've taught students when they come into the dojo is that while, yes, there are truly elements of self-defense and being able to fight and we do a lot of grappling and I could go on and on, but ultimately that, um, that skill set isn't so important for me anyways. Because I feel as though I could teach that in a room with a pair of khaki shorts and a t-shirt on and just concrete walls, and I could get the same thing done. Um, But what's mostly important for the traditional martial artist is the first step is to understand the fundamental difference between what is right and what is wrong. And once you get past that, then there, then the other tenets, and these are going to be explored in later episodes and later dialogue with my students. Ultimately, we go from understanding a fundamental difference between what is right and wrong to being able to have and live and exist in a state of constant self-control, which means that hey, we can surpass the the discussion of fighting techniques and does this work in the street and is this, you know, is this efficient and is this deadly or whatever the discussion you're going to have is going to be. But ultimately what we want to be able to accomplish is having self-control regardless of how stressful the situation might be, regardless of how tense the circumstances might be, how sad you may become or how filled with shame you may become or how excited or even happy, but but being able to control yourself in the most stressful or intense situations means that everyone around you is going to be safer because they're going to gravitate to those who are in control, those who have self-control. And also, if you have a high state of self-control, then your ability to contain and restrain those who may come at you when they lose control, whether it be through anger and rage, your ability to be able to contain that and reciprocate that energy back at them is at a very, very heightened level if you are able to control yourself at the highest point possible. So really, this is what it's all about. And I could go on in in, in later episodes, I'm going to go very deep into that concept. But for right now, I just want you to sort of understand what sort of the outcome is that I want my students to see. But it really begins with the fundamental difference between what is right and what is wrong and having that strong sense of justice. Now, you may, if you listen to the first episode, then you know that um, I pose the question, is it wrong to feel bad for someone or to feel sorry for someone? Is that wrong? Now, this is a question that I pose to the children, and I wanted the children to go home and have this discussion with their parents. And I wanted to hear what the parents had to uh, to say to them and, and how they were inspired and what their thoughts were about it. And and we did get some really interesting feedback from the kids. And, and one of the answers was that 
it is okay to feel sympathy. That is an okay thing. But it's not okay to necessarily just stand by and feel bad for someone and not do anything. But to be symp- to, to have sympathy is okay. To have empathy is okay. One of the other children said, no, it's not okay to feel bad for someone because you're indirectly saying that you're better than that person or your situation in life is better than them and you put yourself above them. Now, whether or not these answers are right or wrong, I do find them interesting, especially from children and especially because these kids are doing such critical thinking and these, the, 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 this critical thinking is really grounded in uh, the tenets of Bushido in my dojo, which is really, to me, is just an awesome thing. So what we went to, uh, from where, where we went to from here was uh, I explained to them the term giri, giri, which means sort of like a obligatory duty. Um, it's uh, sort of how I am with my sensei. When I go to Japan, uh, there's, a, there's a sense of obligation that I have where I'll get up very early in the morning, even though I don't need to, really. I do it anyways, just to go downstairs and clean the dojo. Uh, or if, uh, if there's anything that I can do to help my teacher, uh, I'm, I, I rush to do it. So it's sort of this dutiful obligation that I have, and this is giddy. Now, when we got to talking about the, uh, it's okay to have sympathy for someone When we spoke about Gideon, and we got to understand this word a little bit in the context within the the traditional martial arts, the students started to see that Gideon was actually taking the first step beyond uh, being sympathetic to someone's situation. And for me, for example, the Gideon would be being sympathetic to my sensei's situation where he needed help or he needed assistance with something, and I'd make myself available, and I'd be the first one to take the step to do that. Well, the example came up uh, of a car accident, and uh, uh, a car flips over, and you drive by, and you look at it, and wow, you, you feel pretty sympathetic, and you feel bad for the people that are in that car, and that, that sympathy is okay. What I wanted the children to understand is that a martial artist doesn't stand there, look at the situation with sympathy, and feel bad. But instead, through having a sense of dutiful obligation, which is manifested through the consistent practice of martial arts, they take that first step. They initiate the first step. They will be the first to step forward to help, to, to go to the accident or to go to the situation and make themselves available to help and to serve. Uh, and that is ultimately what giddy is. And when we talk about understanding what is right and wrong, standing by and watching that situation might not necessarily be wrong, but it is not right. And in the eyes of the student, in the eyes of the martial artist, it is actually wrong. Because again, I wanted them to see gi as justice, like what is right, what is wrong. And to be able to move in the direction of righteousness. And, and it's within the dojo, within their training, that they develop a sense of giddy, a sense of obligation. And that obligation is towards what is righteous and what is good and what is the proper path. Now, once, once they get past this tenant, once they understand this, once they take ownership of this, then they'll be able to move on to the next, which is what we're going to talk about in the next episode. So uh, I look forward to having you on the next episode of Kokoro Reflections from the Dojo. Thank you very much. <laughs>